Hawthorns. Time to go retro. High flying West Brom have made their best start to a top flight campaign since 1978. As disco dominated the charts, the baggies boogied to a third place finish. Fast forward to 2012, and everyone's dancing to a different tune at the Hawthorns, led by their understated, unassuming new boss. What a goal by Zoltan Gera! What a start for Steve Clark and his boys. I'm not daft, I'm not a daft person. Uh, I think it was really important that I had a good start because there were a lot of people there saying, oh, Steve Clark is the perennial number two. So I think for me personally, it was good that, that we got off to a good start. And I think it was good for the club because it sort of showed that maybe their appointment of me as head coach wasn't quite so crazy as it might have seemed to some people at the time. Has there been a, a burning behind the scenes desire for you to actually step up to that main job for a while? It was always an ambition to to go out there and, and become the, the main man, the, the man who made the decisions. Uh, it's something that I've worked for almost since the day I stopped playing. I enjoyed the role as number two to a number of really, really good managers. And then you get to the stage where you think, OK, let's see if I'm as good as I, as I hope I'm going to be. How have you been influenced by these great names you've worked alongside? All these people that you work with, you, you try and take something from them. You try and take the the tactical knowledge, the football knowledge, but more than that, I think you try and take their characters. You try and work out what it is that makes them so special, and then you try and implement that in your own style. Jose Mourinho described you as an incredible coach recently, <laughs> and I think he chose his words carefully. What do you think when you hear that sort of praise from someone like him? It was nice of Jose to say those words, uh, because we, we, we had some fantastic times together. Uh, I think he was a little bit disappointed that I didn't become a manager or a head coach in my own right a little bit earlier. But circumstances dictated that it wasn't going to happen until this summer, and that's just the way it's been. There you were, given your marching orders, so to speak, yeah. at Liverpool, and then within a few weeks you're actually living the dream. Yeah. As a manager, quite a summer for you, wasn't it? It was an incredible summer. I really enjoyed my time at Liverpool. I thought we did a good job there. We took the Liverpool supporters to two Wembley Cup finals, gave them that little feel-good factor. Everybody was disappointed with the league form understandably, and we, we thought we would put that right in the coming season. But other decisions were made. Uh, I know the nature of the job in football is that if people perceive that you haven't done well or, or they think that you haven't done well, they, they're in, if they own the club, they're entitled to make the decision to make the change. Within two weeks, I was in a job that I'd always wanted to have, you know, to be the head coach or to be the manager of a football club. It's something that I sometimes wonder that somebody up there must be looking after me. Now you sit one point behind the current champions of England, should you go and beat them, I think it's fair to say a good start would become a fantastic start, wouldn't it? A good start would become a, a better start, that's for sure. It's a difficult game. You, you have to respect the fact that Manchester City are the champions. We don't go shouting about what we can do, but we, we like to think that at the end of the game, no matter what the result is, at the end of the game on Saturday, Manchester City, I know it's been a tough afternoon for them. Welcome back into the